I'm Devin Harrington, the Average Gen Xer. Welcome back to the channel. So today I was planning to take a look at some Reddit posts, but in doing some research on that, I ended up coming across an article by a writer named Katrina Prager who, if you look at her Instagram account, seems like a really cool chick. She's a novelist and a journalist and a traveler, and she does lots of cool things. And um, that's why I was kind of surprised by this article that she wrote that is all over Child Free Reddit right now. It was uh, published on the Medium website. I'll link it below. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's called The Child-Free Mirage, How Young Women Are Being Tricked Out of Motherhood. And I guess I'm kind of confused and surprised that someone who seems, well, judging by her Instagram posts, someone who seems so, I don't know, modern, um, awake in the flow of life, um, would write something so, in my opinion, dumb as this article. So this is from April 14th, I'm guessing of 2023. It doesn't say on the medium site. Anyway, let's read some of this because it just really burned my ass reading this, what she wrote. And it almost seems she doesn't say anything to indicate that she's religious, but it has the feel of a, a Christian. I don't know. Anyway, this is what she says. Much has been said about the child free trend sweeping across social media platforms in recent years. Little reels of women in their 30s and 40s indulging in a plethora of lavish, luxurious activities because, God bless, they didn't make the supreme mistake of having children. Okay, the snark and the sarcasm dripping off of this is already just off-putting. As if women of all ages don't post little reels of them doing all kinds of luxurious activities and God bless they didn't make the supreme mistake of having children. Yes, the child-free movement and the antinatalist movement can be a bit intense sometimes, but that's because we're living in a time when in the United States, they're trying to take away the choice that women fought so hard to have, which is the choice to live a life of their own choosing. But I digress. She goes on. They are but a small part of the anti-parenting trend that's been ravaging Western society. That's a bit dramatic. There's plenty of Plenty of people having kids. The only reason society would worry, at least in the United States, about there not being enough people having kids is because then there's not enough slaves for the machine or not enough wage slaves to feed the Social Security uh, tax. And that's just a whole other thing. But the fact that she says that people are not having enough children and it's ravaging Western society. No, that's silliness. Mainstream media outlets frequently publish articles on the many downsides of having a kid, as well as 
testimonials from regretful parents. There's a whole subreddit called regretful parents. So it's not like anyone is being forced to post on there. There are a lot of people who regret having children because they've been sold a bill of goods that turns out to not be true. That's okay. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. She says, motherhood is now dangled over the heads of young women as an insidious mea culpa to be swiftly eradicated. Personally, I'm getting fed up. Good for you, Katrina, good luck. First off, I'm not impressed by this child-free nonsense. It's the new and improved version of the term childless, which has largely disappeared from online use. And I have to disagree there because I think the term childless, at least nowadays, would refer to people who want children, but for one reason or another can't have them or just haven't had them or are unable to afford them and so don't have them, but they want kids. The term child free is new, but it refers to people who choose to not have children. And unfortunately, that's still a radical concept in society today. And I say unfortunately because it shouldn't be. Uh, and I'm about to go off on a, a story from back in the day, but um, I never realized how lucky I was because I was one of those people who was born knowing I never wanted to have kids of my own because I was here to take care of the animals, whether you know, for whatever reason, I just always knew I had no interest in having, kill in having kids. I, I didn't want to be pregnant. I didn't want to give birth. I didn't want to adopt kids. I didn't want to foster kids. I wanted no part of kids and that's okay. And growing up in the eighties and nineties, I never had any family pressure. I never had anyone in my family ever say, when are you going to get married and have kids? Because apparently I made it so clear from the time I was a little kid myself that I never wanted kids. My mother says I was three when I marched into the kitchen and told her I was never getting married and never having kids. At the time, of course, she was like, shut up. You don't even know what you're talking about. But I knew. And I was very fortunate to know one way or the other. Some people are born knowing they want children of their own and that's fine too. But being child free, the fact that it's such a, a wild concept to some people is, is just ridiculous. It's, um, I guess I'm shocked because I kind of foolishly assumed that it's mainly uh, hardcore religious people that want to force having kids on everybody because Jesus needs soldiers for his army or whatever. But I don't, uh, at least she doesn't say anything in here about being religious. And I'm just surprised to see some young woman who may or may not have kids. She doesn't really say if she has kids of her own, I'm assuming she does, but oh, it's just crazy. Just let people be who they are. Who cares? What do you care? Mind your fucking business. Anyway, she goes on. She's very upset about the term child free replacing child less, which was a derogatory term apparently. Uh, that's not a new trick. The powers that be have been subtly altering our vocabulary for decades now. Yet, as the late George Carlin once pointed out, changing the name doesn't actually change the condition. The late George Carlin also once pointed out many, many, many years ago that society is child obsessed. She goes on. <clears throat> Our society dislikes the term childless because it suggests you're missing something. So instead we've settled on child-free, a structure famous for its previous hits, cancer-free and jail-free. 
cancer free, okay, I get, but jail free? What the hell is she talking about? I, I, jail free, jail free. You're out of jail. We, I, the fact that we normally use the suffix free to refer to a disease or some other misfortune is really telling of how our present society views baby making and society or a certain portion of society has every right to see it that way. That doesn't mean you have to join that opinion, Katrina, you're entitled to your own opinion. And this is an opinion piece. So it must be said, I could have just kept scrolling, but she pissed me off. So here we are. The word, however, like the social media trend is a highly deceptive one. Here's why. This is her explanation for why child free is a dumb term. I don't have a car. If I say I'm car free, I'm referring to all the drawbacks of having a car, insurance, gas, maintenance, etc. If I say I'm car less, it means I'm unable to go places on my own and have to rely on the bus, the train and airline operators. That doesn't even make sense. If you live in a place where you don't need a car, taking public transport is not a negative thing like she's making it out to be here. If you have a car, great. If you don't have a car, great. If you want a car and you don't have one, then I guess, yeah, you're carless, but there's nothing wrong with taking public transport. Either term is deceptive since it only focuses on one side of the coin. Yet most of my driving friends tell me the freedom of having a car vastly outweighs the cons. Well, as someone who has lived in places where you don't need a car, like New York City and Chicago, cities that have amazing public transport, I was thrilled not to have to pay all the crap that comes along with a car. But now I live in Texas where you absolutely need to have a car. So I have a car. It's not really... Uh, the same kind of choice as whether or not to have kids. This is such bullshit. It seems children are a different matter with so many voices in the public limelight focusing on the drawbacks of having kids. Who are all these voices? The people on Reddit? Uh, in the public limelight, focusing on the drawbacks of having kids, which exist. So she admits that. No one's saying they don't. Pregnancy is dangerous, as is the postnatal period. Having a child is a tremendous responsibility for the rest of your life. And true to my Instagram feed, you probably won't have the freedom to hop on a plane to Bali this weekend if you decide to procreate. <laughs> Here's an unpleasant unple truth though, you probably wouldn't have anyway. Let's be real, how many people do you know who do that? Okay, Katrina, it doesn't have to be something as exotic and far flung as hopping on a plane to Bali this weekend. Nobody hops on a plane to Bali for the weekend unless you're super rich and have your own jet. But the average child-free person like myself does things like, I think I'll go to yoga this afternoon. And then I think I'll go to the barn and ride my horse. And then I think I'll go and walk my dogs. And then I think I'll sweep up the yard. And then I'll go get a massage. And those are the kinds of things that child-free people can do. Not to say you couldn't do those things with children if you have the help, the partner or the family or whoever to help you arrange that schedule. But the fact that she just has to throw in going to Bali on a whim as if child-free people stay child-free so they can do crazy shit like that is just asinine. Paradoxically, in my personal circle, the most adventure-heavy 
and travel heavy people I know are parents. Oh, good for you, Katrina. The people I know who didn't have children or indeed families of their own also tend to be the most frustrated people I know. I'm not saying it's a rule, just the way things have occurred around me. Well, it's good that she admits that because she doesn't say how they're frustrated, these people who don't have kids that she knows, or how the people she knows who have children are so well-traveled. She just spits it out there like it's a fact. And it's only a fact in her world. And here's the thing. Becoming a parent can be a jail sentence, but usually only if you treat it as such. There's a heavy focus on the idea that you need to live it up before you have kids, somehow implying you'll stop enjoying life afterward. I mean, if you're going into motherhood with that notion, obviously you won't have a good time. I guess I can agree with her there, but becoming a parent isn't a sentence of sorts you are tied to that child. And regardless of how much help you have, your mind is always with that child, wondering how they are. I am I have no doubt that some people actually love motherhood and good for them. But for the people who are on the fence, which is probably most people, they can make up their own minds without your help, Katrina. She goes on, becoming a parent also brings a host of joys. Maybe that weekend in Bali drinking Mai Tais and fucking some random dude in a hotel room pales in comparison to watching your child grow and become someone you're proud of. Just maybe. I mean, can you even believe this chick? First of all, she's assuming that women who choose to be child free are promiscuous sleeping with strangers in hotel rooms, which is obviously not the case. I mean, she goes on later, of course, you know, it's all feminism's fault. It's always, always feminism's fault. And I have to say, I grew up with my mother and my aunts talking about women's lib and women were liberated in the seventies and the women's movement and Gloria Steinem and all of that. And so growing up, I just assumed women were liberated and that had happened and we could do what we wanted now. And that feminism was kind of over with not over with, but we had progressed beyond that. And the fact that <laughs> it's kind of one of those things, like we can't have come this far to have only come this far. You know, I feel like feminism gets thrown in around like a dirty word. And really all it means is women are equal to all the other humans in the world. Women and men are different but equal and women have all the rights or should have all the rights that men have. And now let's all move on and all be humans together and all give each other the freedom to have all the rights that we want for ourselves. That's all it is to me. And when people ask me if I'm a feminist, it, it almost is like, like an outdated term to me. Just my opinion. Also, getting back to Katrina's article here, watching your children grow and become people you're proud of, no guarantee there, sweetheart. Your children might grow up to be addicts and junkies and alcoholics and thieves and criminals and shit happens. So the joys of motherhood will have to exist alongside you letting your kids be who they are and make their own mistakes. And a lot of people just don't want any part of that. They don't want the worry and stress and that's their choice. Still, all across Europe and the US, birth rates are plummeting. <gasps> oh my God, 
There's eight billion of us. Somebody get out there and breed. Feminists would have us believe, see, feminists would have us believe it's because so many women are waking up to the many more important things they could be doing. This article is like, you could have written this in the 70s. The many more important things they could be doing instead. Me, I'm not so sure. Well, good for you. That's your choice. This is your opinion. And I realize she says at the end of this article, this is her opinion. And if you don't agree with it, just keep on scrolling. But she comes across like she thinks that it's wrong for the child free movement to exist. And according to the title of this article, young women these days are being brainwashed by the child free movement's existence. Not every woman's made for motherhood. I think that's a given. Oh, thank God. She gave us permission. Okay, excellent. That has always been a given with society traditionally constraining women who did not have the mother gene to procreate. Now that's an unfair statement because I don't have the mother gene as far as whatever gene straight women or really any woman has, if there is such a gene that makes you want to have babies of your own and raise children and get joy from that, I don't have that gene, but I absolutely have the mother gene to mother animals and to rescue animals and to comfort animals, uh, animals of all kinds. So just because one doesn't want to procreate or to take care of human children, doesn't mean you don't have a maternal instinct or the mother gene, as Katrina likes to say. Uh, women who did not have the mother gene to procreate, sorry, uh, so society traditionally constraining women who did not have the mother gene to procreate regardless. That was, I'd agree, a mistake since it went against their natural programming. <laughs> their natural programming. I mean, come on. If someone doesn't want kids, they shouldn't have kids. Period. End of story. It's not programming. Jesus Christ, lady, calm down. However, it's impossible that so many women lack that mothering gene as we're led to believe, because if they did, our species wouldn't have made it this far. So what's going on here? This is complete nonsense. It's impossible to, lead, to believe that so many women lack the mothering gene. Is, this a, is there actually a mothering gene that, that makes you want to get pregnant and go through labor and delivery and raise the, the kid? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what this chick is talking about. She's... Uh, I'm speechless, actually. Our species wouldn't have made it this far. Well, that's the thing is women were forced to procreate because for tens of thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, women have been forced to have babies. And it can be said for tens of thousands of years, women have found ways to rid themselves of unwanted pregnancy, but that's a whole other story. She goes on, unfortunately, a lot of young women are being taken in by this intense insinuation that motherhood is terrible and something to be avoided at all costs. In a world where you can be anything, how dare you aim so low as to raising a child? And indeed, when you're 20, struggling to make a name for yourself in your chosen profession and balance a social life that may include my ties and handsome strangers, what the fuck is she obsessed with this, like, women, young women have to be promiscuous and drunk all the time? Motherhood is the farthest thing from your mind. Now, normally, that stage would end somewhere towards your mid-20s. Normally? 
normally. That stage where you want to just be free to call your own shots and do what you want with your day and not have to be responsible for children, that stage ends toward your mid-twenties. Okay. Except we live in a society of permanent infancy. So if you want to be free, that makes you childish, she's saying which has stunted development. Women in their 30s are acting like women in their late teens, but with a little more makeup and a little more entitlement. That's called stunted development. No, Katrina, it's called making your own decisions as a fucking adult in a free society. I mean, I'm American, so I can really only talk speak from the American experience, but I don't think I have stunted development because I chose not to have children. Think of all the people that get knocked up in their teens and early twenties and just have the kid because that's what you're supposed to do. Their development is stunted because they didn't get to go out and discover themselves and learn about the world and find out their boundaries and educate themselves and travel and do all those things. I mean, it, it could go either way as far as stunted development. But she's, in her opinion, saying that by choosing to be free and enjoy your life without the burden of children that you are suffering from arrested development. By the time these women realize having a family might have been nice, it's often too late. Our world has practically abolished the phrase, your clock is ticking. Who has abolished this phrase for you, Katrina? Who? I mean, when I was in my late 30s, I could feel that clock ticking. There is a biological process going on where your body is literally telling you, okay, this is your last chance if we're going to do this. I mean, it's hard to explain, but if you are present in your body and in touch with what's going on, when your fertility is running down it you i could feel it and i never wanted kids and i have no regrets about not having kids and it was a biological process just like for a lot of straight women um you see a, a certain guy and there's just, you know that primal feeling of wanting to have his baby. I know what that feels like, but that doesn't mean I want kids. There's so much more complex things that go into it than just having or not having the mother gene. This girl is ridiculous. Except like most biological facts, you really can't decide you don't like it. That once again falls under childish behavior. Well, what is she saying here? You, you don't like the phrase, the clock is ticking. You don't want to accept that you're not going to be fertile forever. God, I just like, I want to punch this girl in the face. You know, she's just so annoying. And I went to her Instagram and she, her Instagram feed is gorgeous and she seems so cool and so when i read this i it's hard to tie the two together actually but whatever instagram isn't life uh so on the one hand you've got people who naturally lack the parenting gene again with the gene thing i mean i assume it's just an expression she's using um I'm a parent to my dogs, all the dogs that I've had, all the animals that I've had, I am mama to my animals. So does that mean I lack the parenting gene because I don't want to birth kids? No, that's not what it means. 
But then you've got all these young women who've been, here we go, brainwashed into thinking motherhood is a mistake and it's going to rob them of all the freedom they've fought to gain all through their teens. Because what you have here is a host of women barely out of their teenage years and their parents' house who spent a lot of time winning that freedom to go wherever and do whatever. Because of course, if you don't plan to settle down and have babies, then you're just going wherever and doing whatever in this girl's mind. And a lot of these young people are already confronted with the discrepancy between their idealized childhood notion of what adulthood is. No, Katrina, that's just fucking life. Nobody's life turns out the way they dream it's going to be when they're a teenager. That's just reality. It's not about whether you're emotionally stunted because you decide you don't want kids. God, this girl is infuriating. And what it actually turns out to be, most of us aren't what we thought we'd be at 21. Duh. A lot of young people are not figured out. most likely haven't met the love of their life. <laughs> That's a whole other post, okay? There is no one for everyone. Some people meet one person that they're happy with their whole life and good for them. But I think for most people, there isn't just one love of your life. There are many loves of your life. But in her case, I think she's talking about the one you want to have babies with, like a normal woman who has the mother gene. Ugh. Uh, haven't met the love of their life, own a house, or had the wild, enlightening adventures they dreamed of as children. Most of them are struggling to hold a job they might not even like, or pay off debt, or finish school all the while balancing an insta-worthy social life. So then they're faced with an option. Okay, here's our options. A, enjoy, and the quotes are hers, enjoy your wild youth, not that wild or that cool as it turns out, for you, Katrina, for you, not for everybody. Enjoy your wild youth a couple more years, then saddle yourself with a family. And the way she's not really uh, <laughs> selling this very well. And the way a lot of these antinatal publications and influencers are presenting it, option A is basically a return to the oppressive father's house. Uh, okay, if you say so. Your freedoms are taken from you. You don't get to wake up when you want or go where you want to. Well, duh, because you have a baby to look after or multiple babies to look after. And God forbid, when the baby grows into a toddler. I mean, she's like so close to seeing reality and yet she doesn't get it. And here's our other option, okay? B, you can reach for the dream. Because that's what this propag <laughs> propaganda, <laughs> oh my God. That's what this propaganda is doing. Equating not having a kid with that childhood dream of what adulthood is. No, it's not. Come on, Katrina. Women can, can make their own choices. They can decide not to have kids right now. They can change their mind and choose to have kids. They can be like me and know they never want kids. And they can be like you and have kids. And it's all fine. Western civilization is not going to crumble because some women don't want to be moms to humans. 
you get to sleep late and drink whatever. She thinks like every child free woman is running around, sleeping around with, with strangers and getting shit faced all the time. This is like, she's so basic, you know, like, come on. You get to make out, <laughs> you get to make out with who you want and go to Bali on the spur of the moment. She's obsessed with Bali. In other words, these young girls are being told the dream can be salvaged, but they just got to overstep the parent trap. I can't, I just can't. I'll, I'll link the the link below for the whole article if you want to read the rest of it, but she's just so infuriating. I mean, like I said, she doesn't mention religion or anything, but it just reads like someone who has been brainwashed by modern Christianity into thinking they have to breed. They have to produce soldiers for Jesus. And she doesn't say any of that. So maybe she's not religious. And she's just someone who feels that young women are being duped into thinking that staying child free is going to be the way to a fabulous life of freedom and happiness and peace and quiet. And she's right. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it's propaganda. People can make their own decisions, Katrina, just like you. You on your Instagram look like you're having a lovely life and doing all kinds of wonderful things. And people that don't have kids or that don't know if they don't want kids can make their own decisions. There is no propaganda machine. There's just the modern world where in most civilized countries now, women for the first time in history, uh, since basically the, the 1970s, and that's not very long ago, women have been growing up in societies where they can say, yeah, I, I just don't think it's for me. And move on with their life. It doesn't have to be this big deal. There's plenty of breeders out there. The human race is not going to die out anytime soon. So just fucking chill. Anyway, if you'd like to check out this article or Katrina Prager's beautiful Instagram posts, um, they are linked below, as well as my own Instagram and other ways to contact me. And I thank you so much if you've made it this far. <laughs> I moved this weekend to a new house and I am so exhausted. Uh, moving is just the worst thing ever. And I, I really am trying to stick to a schedule. Obviously, this is a very new channel. Uh, I'm a, a baby YouTuber and I'm really trying to stick to my schedule of posting every Sunday night. So I was really having anxiety over what to post about. I've got some ideas for videos I want to make and they're just way too um, involved. Uh, they would take more time than what I had this weekend. And so if you find this kind of content interesting, please like, subscribe share all that good stuff. And thank you so much guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.